Hey guys, today is my birthday. That's gonna mean jack shit for anybody watching this video in the days after it's posted, but for anybody watching the video on the day that I posted it, today is the first day of my 28th year on this planet. How am I celebrating my 28th birthday, you might ask? Well, by reviewing a Godzilla movie, of course. I mean, how do you celebrate your birthday? And the Godzilla movie I want to review is Godzilla vs. Mechagodzilla 2. Now, this came out in 1993, and this is the 20th film in the Godzilla franchise, and the 5th film of the Heisei Godzilla series. And I have Godzilla vs. Mechagodzilla 2 on VHS. Now, despite the film's title, this is not a sequel to 1974's Godzilla vs. Mechagodzilla, which was part of the Shoha Godzilla series. This is more of a... I guess you could say it's a loose remake, but when I say loose remake, I mean very, very loose. Because it's not even the same story as the original Godzilla vs. Mechagodzilla. As much as I hate the term reimagining, because normally when people say, oh, it's not a remake, it's a reimagining, usually they're being pretentious assholes, but this is one of the few times where I would say the term reimagining does apply, because it really is a reimagining of the whole Mechagodzilla concept. But this movie also brings back some classic kaiju from the Shoha era, not just Mechagodzilla, but also Rodan, and even Minya. Yes, I know Minya is technically considered to be a different character, but Baby is basically this series' version of Minya. Now, Toho initially intended this to be the final film of the Heisei series, but of course it proved successful enough for them to do two more after this. Now, I heard that this was originally going to be a remake of King Kong vs. Godzilla, but Toho could not secure the rights from RKO, but I would have loved to have seen how the Heisei series handled King Kong. But I am glad we got the movie that we did, because I do really like this movie. Now, the plot of Godzilla vs. Mechagodzilla 2 is it's set some time after the events of Godzilla and Mothra, the battle for Earth. However, it mostly refers back to the events of Godzilla vs. King Ghidorah. Basically, in the movie, the Japanese government salvages the remains of Mecha King Ghidorah, a cybernetic version of King Ghidorah from the future. And through reverse engineering, they manage to create a robot version of Godzilla, dubbed Mecha Godzilla, which they hope will finally be the weapon that could kill Godzilla once and for all. But in the movie, there's a small expedition to this island that has been polluted by nuclear waste, and there they find an egg that has been laying dormant since the time of the dinosaurs dinosaurs, but has been revived by the radiation. And this egg is being guarded by a mutated pteranodon called Rodan. Eventually, the egg is brought to Japan where it hatches, revealing a baby creature of the same species as Godzilla. And in the movie, Godzilla and Rodan start fighting, both monsters trying to claim the baby Godzilla as its own. And humanity is literally caught up in the middle of this battle, so, controlled by a small group of pilots, Mecha Godzilla intervenes in this fight, trying to destroy both monsters. But eventually, it's discovered that Godzilla might have a weakness. In the movie, it's revealed that Godzilla has a second brain in his body, and if this second brain is destroyed, he will be paralyzed. So, in the movie, the Japanese government tries to use Miki Sagusa, the young psychic woman from the previous Godzilla films, to help them locate Godzilla's second brain and destroy it, but she's having second thoughts about trying to kill Godzilla, feeling that this creature might have just as much a right to exist on this planet as we do. Now, as I said, I do really like this movie. I think it's a great action movie and a great kaiju film in general. And I would say the special Special effects in this movie, for the most part, are really well done, except for a few shots of Rodan flying. There are a few moments where Rodan does look very stiff as he's flying, where you can kind of tell that it's a puppet. But I do really like Rodan's redesign in the movie, and also in the film, Rodan has atomic breath, like Godzilla, which kind of makes sense because in this continuity, Rodan was mutated by atomic radiation the same way Godzilla was, so it makes sense that he would have the same powers as Godzilla. 
And as much as I do prefer the classic look for Mechagodzilla from the original film, I do really like his redesign in this movie. It makes sense for this series. Because this is sort of a 90s update of the character. It also makes sense for the Heisei series to have Mechagodzilla be a robot made by humans as opposed to a robot made by aliens like he was in the original film. I also like how because in this movie the humans are controlling Mechagodzilla, it's basically the humans taking part in Godzilla and Rodan's fight and fighting on the same level as these two kaijus. But you also see how even with this advanced technology, mankind really can do nothing against these two unstoppable forces of nature. I also think it's interesting how there is kind of a fantasy element with this movie. For example, something happens with Rodan towards the end of the movie. I don't want to give it away, but it does kind of imply that there's something mystical or supernatural going on here. And also, before the baby Godzilla hatches out of the egg, there's this plant growing on the egg, and somehow this plant makes this music. So the movie does have this element of fantasy amidst all this sci-fi that I think is really interesting, even though it's never fully explained. It also helps that the movie has some very likable human characters. You have Makumi Odaka coming back as the character of Miki Sagusa, and she's given a lot more to do than she has in the previous films. Although I will say her arc in the movie of her not wanting to kill Godzilla does seem a little bit rushed and could have been developed a little bit more. Then you have the character of Kazumi who is very intelligent yet is also kind of a dumbass at the same time, but he is a very endearing character. And then you have the character of Asusa, who's this young scientist who is part of the expedition that found the egg, and when the baby Godzilla hatches, she's the first thing that the baby Godzilla sees. So, she basically becomes a mother figure for the baby Godzilla, and really the relationship between her and the baby Godzilla is kind of the heart of the movie. And the fact that they develop sort of this mother-slash-child relationship, despite one being human and one being a dinosaur, kind of establishes this strange link between humanity and Godzilla. And Baby does end up being the standout character in the movie, and does almost feel like a human character. But it's done in a way where it doesn't feel cheesy like it did in the Shoha era when they tried to give their monsters human qualities. But yeah, Godzilla vs. Mechagodzilla 2 is a really good Godzilla film, and a really good kaiju film in general. Now, before I end this video, I want to cut to my friend Christian Feliciano giving his thoughts on Godzilla vs. Mechagodzilla 2. Godzilla vs. Mechagodzilla 1983 is a fun movie, but my problem with this movie is that where they get stuff right, they also got stuff so wrong. Like, it's hit and miss in the same movie. When they hit, home run. When they miss, whoo, they, I mean, that ball wasn't even near the bat. That's how bad it is, because in the, in the, for example, Mechagodzilla, his creation, his new origin story is fantastic. The Japanese government decides they're going to take out Godzilla, so they decide they're going to make a, Robot Godzilla to defeat Godzilla instead of the aliens, I guess, to make it more realistic or whatever. So that's what they do. And that, to me, is awesome. I thought that was a great change. I mean, I don't mind them taking up the aliens for this. Uh, will it make sense in the future reviews? I don't know. But for right now, I'm just saying that that little change right there was cool. But then they do something that I was like, huh? They find out that Godzilla has two brains. Now, the first one is presumably in his head. The second one is near his ass. I mean, you know, where his tail is at, but still near his ass. And I said, are you kidding me? You know, like I said, when they hit, they hit. When they miss, whoo, they really miss. Because I was like, this is, that's stupid. And they, what they want to do is they want to take out the second brain. Uh, so basically, they want to kick his ass, which is... I know some people have that sense of humor. 
that's fine. I have a sense of humor like that. Uh, do I want that in my Godzilla films? It depends. That's all I can say. And um, But yeah, I do enjoy the film. Don't get me wrong. I really enjoy it. It's a good film. It is really good. I think a lot of people would enjoy it if you want the more modernized Godzilla, even though this was in the 90s. It's more modern, but you know, if you want to see that, then fine, you'll enjoy this. But um, yeah, that to me is just a problem for me, that little story change there. And yeah, uh, that's all I really have to say about it. Um, I could probably think of more ass jokes, but I'm not going to go into it. Anyway, uh, yeah, uh, thank you so much. Uh, bye bye.